Hi, welcome to Veer Tutorials. I'm Sean, and today I'm going to show you how to save an EPS file from an Adobe Illustrator file. Uh, sounds easy, but there actually is a few challenges and pitfalls when saving an EPS file from an AI file. So I'm going to quickly walk through some of the biggest concerns for us here at Veer, and uh, hopefully provide some uh, solutions or ideas for you when you're providing the files to us. So one of the first things that I like to do is bring up my document info window. Uh, I'm just going to choose that from the window menu and scroll down to document info. As you can see, my document info palette is now up on the top right hand corner. It provides some information like the name of the file, the color mode, and the size of the artboard, but this isn't the, the information that we want. Choose objects from the panel menu, and then re go back up and, and uncheck the selection only. This allows the document info to search out information about the entire file rather than just the selection that we're making. The next thing we want to check to make sure is that we have no open paths. This is really easy using the document info. We can just go up, look under paths, and see that there's zero open paths. Makes it easy. If there are any open paths, you do need to go back into your illustration and start searching for those open paths and make sure that they're joined um, and, and that they complete a, a, a full path. The next thing that we want to watch out for is the transparency effects. When saving back to an EPS format, we can't use the transparency effects. So again, it's really quick to just to go down and check into the transparency groups and the transparency objects and just see if you have any transparencies. You can see here both of the uh, op uh, both have none. So uh, transparencies aren't a concern for us here. One of the last things that we want to check for when we're looking at the document info is for linked or embedded images. These are sometimes files or scans that you may bring into your illustration file while you're drawing from uh, that may be forgotten about or hidden on another layer. Um, it's very easy, again, just to check down in here. We have linked images, and it says none. Embedded images, none. Again, this is sort of what we want to see. We don't. We want to make sure that there are no linked images, no embedded images, no transparencies, and that we have no open paths. So the next thing that we want to look at is stray points and objects. One of the best ways to do that is just to zoom out of the file until you get to the point where you see the artboard and the workspace all contained in your window. Select all and check to see if there are any objects or straight points that are outside of your artboard. As you can see from this file, there are none. They are all contained within the artboard. The next thing that we want to make sure is that the layers that we have in our illustration are unlocked. Going down to your layers palette, you can see there's layer one and next to it is toggles lock. Clicking here will lock the file and clicking again will unlock the file. Please always supply the files to us unlocked. This provides most versatility for our customers and provides most versatility for a lot of the other editing programs that are out there as well. The other thing that we want to check for is rules or guidelines. This file is very clean right now. Um, we do have the rules up right now. Um, so I'm just going to sort of pull from the rules and, and just sort of show you what a, a typical file may have. And we may have some of these guidelines. Uh, illustrators love using these to help with proportions and, and for arranging things. But they can kind of look messy and can sometimes confuse our clients. So what we want to do is make sure that those guides are cleared. So go under View, scroll down to Guides, and then go to Clear Guides. This removes the guides from the board and again provides a, a cleaner looking file. The other thing that you can do is to hide the rules. So going down, you can go hide rulers. And again, it just makes the file a little cleaner and a little bit uh, simpler for the client to look at. The next thing that we want to do is delete any unused swatches that we have in our collection. So going to the swatch palette and clicking on the panel menu, Go down to select all unused. This is going to highlight all of the uh, swatches in the uh, illustration file that aren't being used. So we can just go down to the trash can and just hit delete swatch. We'll get a dialog that comes up asking us if we want to delete them. We'll say yes. 
as you can see, we're just left with the, the swatches that are in the file now. And again, it just makes it a little cleaner and a little simpler for our customers to use when they're uh, editing the files. So now we're gonna go on to saving the EPS. I'm going to save this to a Veer Uploads folder. I'm going to make sure that the format is Adobe Illustrator EPS. Now an option comes up to use artboards. When you're saving an EPS, do not use the use artboards uh, selection. It uh, can provide problems for people when they're opening up their files if their version's different than the one that you used when you save this file. So again, just make sure that it's unchecked. Click Save. We're presented with our EPS options. The first thing that we need to do is make sure that we're choosing the right version. So I'm gonna scroll down to Illustrator 8 EPS, which is the version that we like to see our files presented in. Now I'm going to go down and uncheck some of these options. These are options that we don't want selected. So we don't wanna embed our fonts. We wanna make sure that there is no linked files. We do, however, want a document thumbnail. So we'll, we'll keep this one selected. We do not need the uh, CMYK profile postscript for the RGB files, and we do not need a compatible gradient or gradient mesh printing. Um, the other thing, we need to uncheck the use printer uh, default screen because this isn't required as well. The one change that we do want to make though is to our postscript. Uh, we do want to go to a language level three, which helps for gradient meshes. I'm going to say okay. We'll be presented with this uh, dialog box, which just tells us that we're saving it in an older format and that all our type will be reduced to point type and that some of the editing may be problematic when the document is read back and is asking us to continue. We will say okay. And that's it. The file's been saved to my Veer Uploads folder and we're done. So I hope that's been useful and please check back again for more tutorials. Take care.